Hello everybody, Dominomial here, and welcome back to Super Mario Galaxy, episode 16, and sorry about the sudden cut at the end of last episode. Apparently, the data storage uh, update I got a few episodes ago wasn't for show. I actually ran out of memory. Luckily, I ran out of memory right as the episode was going to end, and I collected all 100 purple coins, but I deleted, like, all my files of episodes, like, 1 through 12. So, I just figured that if I need them again, I can just download them with, like, a YouTube to MP4 converter or something like that. But yeah, now I have, like, 130 gigs. And also, I'm gonna see if I can... Well, I have an SD card right here that I'm using, but... Yeah. It won't happen again. Well, okay, it might happen during Xenoblade when we do like maybe like two hour recording sessions. Uh, but who knows? So this level is pretty simple. Remember that auto scroller from the first mission? Yeah, you just have to do that again, but collect purple coins on the way. Now, you could say that this auto-scroller is a little bit difficult. It, 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 I could see why people would say that. I mean, it's not really forgiving in the sense that you have to collect all 100 purple coins. But just... Just look at the shadows on the platform if you need to, for a depth perception, and just follow the trail. It's not that bad. And the game gives you extra health, so you don't have to worry about dying. Ooh, that was a very inefficient way of collecting all those coins. Don't worry, that was kind of a fake out to get you on the bottom, but you need to jump over it this way. And there, that's all. Very simple, nothing you really need to worry about in that level. Long jump over, and there. If you talk to that robot and you don't collect all 100 purple coins, he'll just kill you. What missions can I do? Nothing. Okay. Well, since there's not really anything else to do Comet-wise, might as well go and check out the new dome. I'm handling this very inefficiently, but this is kind of how most playthroughs of the game, like, you know, kind of combust if you're trying to be organized about it. Because you can't really be organized when playing this game. All the comets go through cycles. In Galaxy 2, they fix that, in which the comets are always there. Uh. But yeah. I kind of lost my uh, train of thought right there, in case you were wondering. So, you may have already noticed, but there's no Bowser level in this stone. That's because the Bowser level is the final Bowser. So, uh, yeah. Let's go straight into the lava world, shall we? I'm sure nothing bad will happen. Sinking Lava Spire. Huh. The background of this level actually looks really cool. All the lava pouring from top to bottom. Just like the lava pillars. The music is really good. Like, this level just gives off a really menacing vibe. And I love it. 
well, okay, maybe not menacing per se, but definitely lava world-ish. And also, this is unique music, so I'll let you listen to it for a little bit. Okay, that probably wasn't the best time for me to let you listen to the music, as it's mostly just repeating the same part over and over again. Granted, that's all music in some kind of form. But, yeah, this level's just really cool. If you drop down into the volcano, you can get some star bits. How many star bits do you want? Hey you, yeah you got any tasty star bits? If you feed me a bunch of star bits, I'll burst a snacky happiness and transform. I think he wants a hundred. Oh, 80, wow. Why did I have trouble collecting all those star bits as a kid? Whatever. I'm not gonna feed the hungry Luma yet. We're gonna go through the normal mission. If you abuse the momentum of the pole stars, you can kind of skip half of that section. So, this level is definitely harder than most of the other levels in the game, as uh, <laughs> most of the terrain is lava, and lava hurts if you couldn't have guessed already. We've already dealt with lava before, so I'm not going to show off that it hurts, but you already know what it does if you've watched this Let's Play in a chronological order. Although I don't know who would skip to part 16 first and then watch part 8 where, like, I do the lava shenanigans. Well. At least I didn't die anywhere important. So yeah, just be careful when platforming on these areas. And then, oh no. The tower's collapsing. It's kind of like that one chase section in Dusty Dune's galaxy. Uh, this is pretty simple. You don't need to worry about it too much because the lava rubber bands. So if you go slower, it's going to go slower. If you go faster, it's going to go faster. This is a little shortcut route that leads to a one-up. And then you can just jump down here and then... Actually, I think that's about equally as fast as the normal route, but that has a one-up on it. Oh, can I just, like... Can I just... I can. Wow! I can just do that! For some reason, I never thought of trying that. <laughs> Man, as a kid, I really took that chase section to... <laughs> Maybe I just was too panicked in that chase section to ever try and sequence break it. Hungry Luma has appeared. Oh, there, oh there's one next to the garden. Or the, 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 the gate. Sorry. Let's go back to Melty Molten Galaxy. I like this galaxy. And also, this is a pretty good place to get star bits. Maybe not the second mission, per se, but the first one. If you want to naturally collect star bits, anyway. You can get, like, a free 18 star bits just from that intro.
Oh, right, this part. Now, this part took me forever to solve as a kid. But see this lava enemy? Yeah, he's gonna light your torches. There's no fire flower in sight, but you're surrounded by fire. So, you just have to use that fire. Yeah, the game devs thought of that. You can't long jump around that planet. You actually have to go around the long way, unfortunately. They put an invisible wall right there. <laughs> this part is a little bit scary. But the thwomps are on a cycle. And if you just long jump, you should be fine. Here we have the blue guys again. <coughs> Fuck. <laughs> Jeez. Well, looks like I needed that life shroom after all. If you're not trying to go fast on this part, you'll be fine. But I like going fast, so, uh... Yeah, that's my little dilemma there. Oh, I completely forgot about this planet. <laughs> yeah, so this level is basically offering just challenge after challenge. It's not too difficult for me, because I've played this game a ton before, but it definitely can be difficult for somebody who is trying to uh, get the missions level. This is basically the last level you play before going to Final Bowser, if you're playing this in a normal sense, where you don't try and 100% all the domes right away, and you just go at your own pace. I want this bullet bill to go right, because I want it to avoid the fiery guy. And there. Oh, remember the ball rolling? Now it's in a minor key. Be careful. You don't want to dash straight into a pit. I mean, this part isn't too bad, but you can die if you're not careful. Don't go on the small platform. That's not big enough for you to make that jump. Or it probably is if you're going at full speed, and I bet speedrunners probably use it, but I don't. Almost at a hundred stars. Jeez, this game is going by quickly. And while I am excited to like finish it and then do something else, like Xenoblade for example, I also don't want this game to end at the same time. It's one of those kinds of feelings. Because I absolutely love this game. But I'm just tearing through it at a pretty fast speed. Granted, my episodes are a little bit longer than, uh, say, uh, Chugga Conroy's or, like, say, Anella's or, like, I don't know, who else? Who else do I watch? I don't know. But my videos are definitely longer than some other people's. But... I'm not cutting out any of the stuff I do. You're watching this all live with me, pretty much. Except for the end of last episode where uh, video cut. But 
yeah. This is a fun game. Uh, I don't really know what else to say about it. Ooh. No. You want to do that, I believe. And then... There should be a launch star up here. No? Really? Really? Maybe the warp pipe is the correct answer. Oh, it really is. That's kind of odd. I forgot about that. Uh, you want to kill all the enemies in this section. It's not too bad. Just be careful that you don't get hit. It's kind of odd that the game wants you to do that, because there's only one or two other times where the game actually wants you to kill every enemy on screen on the planet. And usually those come with, like, indicators that they want you to do that. That just kind of... The game just kind of throws that at you randomly. Granted, while I was playing this game, I was also playing Legend of Zelda, so my instincts to kill all the enemies were screaming at that part when I first played the game. Because I couldn't see any other way out. Yeah, I was playing Twilight Princess at the same time. I wasn't very good at Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess. Uh, if I remember correctly, I stopped playing the game for a long time because once I got to uh, the Twilight area, like the actual like Twilight like world... Uh, the dungeon where you had to collect the light orbs. I stopped playing the game at that part because, look, those hands freaked me out. I didn't like those hands. They were... Look, if a giant ominous floating hand comes at you, then of course you'd be kind of scared. Especially as a six -year like seven-year-old playing that game. Although I was pretty proud of myself for playing through that far in Twilight Princess, because I don't know if I really went over this at all before. Oh, shit. Uh, but I grew up with the N64. Uh, I wasn't really a GameCube kid. I'm not really nostalgic for any of GameCube ki uh, games. Even though I was born, like, 2001? Like, I am 18 years old at this point while recording this. I, I didn't own a GameCube. I had older siblings that had an N64. And I bet they all knew of the GameCube. Or at least a little bit. But I grew up with the N64, and then the first other console that I got was actually the Wii. And then I played GameCube games through the Wii because my brother was like, Hey, we basically have a GameCube now. We could play, like, you know, Wind Waker. Like, cool. Of course, I was still a kid back then, and, of course, my brother being, like, kind of like a teenager at that point. Uh, I don't know how old he was exactly, but, of course, as a teenager, you kind of naturally hate young kids <laughs> no no like i'm not saying that as in like i hate kids but like come on I if you like tell me like to take care of like a six-year-old for like an hour i'm just gonna internally die i get really annoyed by dealing with kids and unfortunately i had to deal with that a lot but You know, kids are kids. They, it takes them like 15 years to actually, well, yeah. It, it takes them like several years to actually grow up and be helpful and not annoying. 
I mean, I was just as annoying as a kid. I was an awful kid. I was probably one of the worst kids ever, but, you know. Just because I was an awful kid doesn't mean I want to take care of awful kids. Awfully annoying kids, not like... Ah, uh, you get what I mean. Anyway, point is... Uh, I already said this before. But my brothers and sister singular sister that wanted to play the Wii basically used stuff all the time on it and played stuff like Guitar Hero. Guitar Hero was a very popular one. I already told that story. But both of my brothers also played Twilight Princess together. And when Skyward Sword came out, they also played that together. Uh, when Skyward Sword came out, I actually wasn't completely terrified of playing Zelda games. The only part of Skyward Sword that actually scared me was the Silent Realm. You know, the part where you have to stealth around, like, the whole, like, alternate universe, and... Uh... When you fail, like... Uh, trauma happens. <laughs> I asked my sister for help whenever I got to those, and she was like, I, I can't do that, why don't you just do it? And I'm like... But I don't want to, I'm scared. And then like one day, a after I thought I did all three Silent Realms, uh, spoiler alert for Skyward Sword if you haven't played it, there is a Silent Realm in Skyloft. And uh, I didn't know that. So when I got to that part of the game, I was just like, oh no, another Silent Realm? And I asked my sister for help and she's like, no, do it yourself. Like, but no, I want help. Nah. I, I forced myself to do it, and somehow, some way, somehow, I got that Silent Realm on my first attempt. Although I almost got caught a couple of times by the floating reapers that tried to kill you. Oddly enough, I've never really fully replayed Skyward Sword since then. I put it in the Wii since then and, like, tried to replay it, but I just can't replay Skyward Sword. It's a good game. Granted, it has flaws, but, like, it has really good dungeons. I remember the, the Skyward Sword for that, but other than that, I don't really remember too... Well, I remember the general plot and, like, the general beats... But every time I try to play it, I just stop getting in. I just lose interest. Although, that's kind of me with every Zelda game. I love playing it once, but on repeat playthroughs, I kind of start to hate it. Like, Twilight Princess. I, I like that game. That was my first Zelda game playing. And beating. That was the first Zelda game I beat. I beat that when I was like 8 or 9 or something like that. Before Skyward Sword came out. But my first experience with Zelda was, of course, on the N64 with Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask. I never played Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask as a kid. I never wanted to because whenever I saw my brothers playing those games, they would always play the scary parts of that game. Like, in Majora's Mask, when they looked up at the moon and I saw, oh my god, the moon is crashing down on Termina, I'm just thinking, why is this game so scary? <laughs> Well, okay. I wasn't scared of Majora's Mask because of the whole, like, moral, like, dilemmas that the game presents. I was scared just because the moon had a terrifying face and a long nose. That's reason enough for, like, a six, like, like a four-year-old. A four-year-old child to be scared of Majora's Mask. I didn't get around to playing that game until the 3DS remake, actually. 
which after playing it, it's my favorite Zelda game. Would I replay it? Eh, probably not. It has a lot of flaws that I don't like. It's kind of ambiguous where it wants you to what it wants you to do sometimes. But it has really good side quests. It's the only Zelda game where I've actually done the side quests. Uh, Ocarina of Time, I've actually never finished. Ocarina of Time is one of those games that I probably should have played some point in my life. I just never have. I tried it once. I got it on the Wii, on the Wii Virtual Console. I have it downloaded on my Wii U. I could play it right now if I wanted to. But I just don't really want to play that game. Every time I play it, I just think... This isn't really that fun. <laughs> like, I keep hearing people, like, say, Oh, Ocarina of Time is the best Zelda game. And then I, once I actually play it, I'm like, Nah, this is just, like, worse Majora's Mask. This is just worse Twilight Princess. This isn't really too fun. <laughs> but, I'll, I'll, okay, I'll give it that it's the first 3D Zelda game. I'll give it that. I'll also, like, say, like, okay, maybe I didn't like it because when I did play it, I was kind of young and kind of stupid. But I just don't feel the need to ever go back to that game. Like, I basically already know what you have to do in that game and all the story beats of that game just from other people playing that game. Like, I've seen, like, millions of Let's Plays of that game. And I've seen my brothers and sister uh, play, like, a million times already. Ah, no. Something about that game just doesn't vibe... Doesn't mesh well with uh, my own personal tastes. It's an opinion, guys. It's an opinion. Don't freak out. Everybody has opinions. It also doesn't help that I was also kind of terrified of playing Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask as a kid. <laughs> I mean, I, I love... My siblings. I really do. I like them all. But boy, I, whether it was intentional or not, they loved traumatizing kid me. <laughs> uh, yeah, sure, we can go on a little bit longer. We're getting near the end of the game, and uh, honestly, like, I don't want to quit in the middle of this discussion or talk. But yeah, <laughs> my siblings loved to traumatize kid me. I already told about my brothers and sister playing the N64 when I was around and playing all the scary parts of the games. But <laughs> my oldest sister, who's, well, okay, I have like five other siblings, and my oldest sister is the oldest one, so... Of course, there's a big age difference between me and her. Like, <sighs> several years. Back when I was about nine, so like 2010 or so, she was getting into watching the series Doctor Who. You know, the TV series. The TARDIS. Uh, it also has... a. Uh, the voice actor of Melia from Xenoblade as one of the partners, one of the companions. Like, I think, like, maybe season five, season six or something? I, I don't know for sure. I just know that the voice actor for Melia was also playing a part in Doctor Who, and she kind of made it big since Xenoblade Chronicles. Anyway, the point is, she was watching Doctor Who at the time, and she got addicted to that series. And she said to me one day, like, hey, I think you might like Doctor Who. I'm like, what's Doctor Who? Uh, this was back when uh, I didn't have access to games 24-7. 
And so, to pass time, I read books. Or, well, I don't think I got quite into books yet, but I, I got into books around somewhere that time, and I think maybe right after Doctor Who I got into reading books. But my sister was like, hey, you might like Doctor Who, Dominic. I'm like, cool, what's it about? And she's like, uh, time travel? Aliens? I'm like, oh, really? I like time travel. I want, I, I want to give that show a try. And the first episode she showed me, uh, I don't remember what the first episode she showed me was, but it was some episode in season two. I think it was the episode in season two where they, like, uh, see, like, the tentacle uh, humanoid aliens. And the episode where the Doctor literally just, I think, defeats Satan, quite literally. <laughs> it was one of those episodes. I think it was the ep it was the episode where I think the Doctor killed Satan. <laughs> That's all I remember. Uh, I also remember watching the episode with the Daleks. The Daleks, I clearly remember. that Those are my favorite species in Doctor Who. Just because Daleks exterminate. Yeah. So, after watching those two episodes... Okay, looks like this talk is going to go on longer than I thought. But after watching those two episodes... My sister... I don't think I'm going to say her name. I'll probably just uh, fade that part out in Movie Maker. Sorry, scratching my back. But <laughs> she was like, ooh, there's also some scary episodes in this show. I'm like, scary episodes? What do you mean? And she's like, uh, <laughs> there, there's a species called Weeping Angels in that show. I'm like, uh, Weeping Angels? And she's like, I probably shouldn't show it to you. And Kid Me was like, no, I'm going to take you up on that challenge. I'm going to watch the Weeping Angel episode. <laughs> and then I immediately regretted it. I immediately regretted it. The Weeping Angels are terrifying. And like, for like, about like a good like year after watching that episode... I was terrified of Weeping Angels, or just, like, maybe some kind of, like, presence, like, sneaking up on me while I wasn't looking, like, while I was blinking. I hate the Weeping Angels. Why did I say yes? And then she said, like, maybe a couple weeks afterwards, like, yeah, I shouldn't have shown you the Weeping Angel episode. I'm just like, no, I I'm fine. I'm fine. Because, <laughs> of course... As a kid, I denied the fact that I was scared of the Weeping Angels. I mean, of course, she knew that I was terrified of them. But still. <sighs> so, if any of you watching are, like, you know the older, like, brother or sister of a member of your family, and they're young, and they're annoying. Like, they may be annoying, but don't traumatize them for life by showing them scary shit like that. <laughs> I, I got over my Weeping Angel fear, but, uh, I think I like to take out, uh, back after I watched that episode, I like to take out, uh, that annoyance, that, like, paranoia, and onto other people. Because, uh... Yeah. After watching that episode, I had some friends, and I showed them the Weeping Angel episode of Doctor Who. And they also got really scared. They're like, why did you show me that, Dominic? I'm like, I don't know. I just wanted to show it to you. <laughs> Jeez. As a kid, I was an asshole, huh? Well, not like I'm too much different now, like... I'm not gonna say, like, I'm a saint. 
I'm definitely more of the selfish type than, like, you know, say, other people. But, yeah. Childhood trauma. <laughs> My favorite thing to talk about. <laughs> There's also a couple other scary episodes in that show. Like, I believe in season one, there's an episode where they just have, like, a kid wearing a gas mask being like, Are you my mama? Or something like that. And it's just really creepy. It shouldn't really... Eh, it's kind of creepy. It's not the creepiest episode. The Weeping Angels are definitely the scariest, but... Yeah. Odd thing is, though, even though I watched the Weeping Angel episode, the first two episodes of Doctor Who made me want to watch the rest of the series with my sister. Or what was out at the time. I think season five was out. It was, uh, I don't know what Doctor, but it was like the one with like the, uh, no, no, I'm not going to do that. That's a very scary thing to do. But, I don't remember what doctor, I know what he looks like, but, yeah. I've been thinking of maybe, like, catching up with that series, because I stopped watching it at, like, season 8, season 7. After finishing season 7, I was just kind of dissatisfied with the series. I was like, I'm, I'm gonna move on to different stuff. Uh... I heard from a friend that, uh, I heard from a friend that, uh, Doctor Who has actually stayed pretty good up until the most recent season. So, I, I might give it a shot. I know this episode is running really long. We're already at 38 minutes, but I just can't end this episode off without getting to at least 100 stars. If I end this episode at 99 stars, it's going to bother me, and it's going to bother you. So we'll just do this quick mission, and then we'll call it a day. So the gimmick of this level. Uh, the floor disappears and appears. It's fine. It's a neat little one-off level. Man, I really don't know what to talk about after that whole Doctor Who rant tangent. Not rant. Well, there, there's not really anything I can talk about right now that would, like, remain at, like, two minutes long. Also, this is the only other instance in the game where you had to use Spring Mario. Well, no. Okay. I forgot about this instance, actually. So you have to use Spring Mario three times total in the game. And I think two times if you're Luigi. I think Luigi is able to actually wall jump up those cakes in uh, Toy Time Galaxy without using Spring Mario. You just need to do a more precise jump. Or wait, no. Actually, no. You still need to use the Spring Mushroom as Luigi. Those cakes, I believe, aren't wall-jumpable surfaces. The only tip I can really give about Spring Mario is try and move as little as possible. <laughs> Seriously. Oh, 
Oh, right. They throw you in for a loop and put the platforms on the side for that one. Wow, so scary. Wait, is there something up there? Really? Holy cow! Wait, what? Uh, this is the intended route, but I have Spring Mario! <laughs> what? Uh, I don't want Spring Mario! <laughs> this part would suck with Spring Mario! <laughs> Why? I forgot that was the intended route! You can just jump up there with Spring Mario? Okay, game. Okay. You're so easy to sequence break that I thought that was a secret path. <laughs> Clearly my uh, memory on this level is a little bit hazy. Yeah, as you can tell, this part is a lot easier without Spring Mario. Apparently, you can go to this part of the level with Spring Mario, which I never knew. <sighs> I believe the left path is correct. Or you can just long jump. You don't really have to worry about it too much. And I could long jump to that star, but... I want to play it a bit safe. Because there's no sense of depth perception when you don't have a shadow. Because the background is all black. And we're at a hundred stars. This is honestly a milestone. We're in the last 20 stars of the game, and there's only a couple episodes left of this series. Can you believe it? Well, next time, I'll probably be tackling a few of the purple comets, purple coin comets, because I've been kind of neglecting those, and I need to do that. So... Without further ado, see you next episode. Bye!